In Canada, we believe that immigration is going to spring our economic recovery out of this global pandemic. Hello friends, welcome back to the Canada Info Hub channel. My name is Wolo. I live in Winnipeg, Manitoba, and I talk about immigrating to Canada. So this channel is actually a one-stop channel for everything Canada, life in Canada, immigrating to Canada, and I talk mostly about immigrating to Canada because I love you guys, and I want you guys to come join me live in a society that is forward-thinking, a society that has good quality of life, a society where your children can grow up and thrive. If you really love to come to Canada, just subscribe to this channel and um, turn on the notification bell. Anytime I upload a video, you'll be the first to know. At the beginning of this video, you'll heard the Minister of Immigration telling people that immigration is what will bring Canada up after the pandemic. And this was as a result of the conversation that is going on in the US, where, of course, you know, Donald Trump has banned H-1B visas. That is the skilled worker visas for high-tech people. Donald Trump has banned those visas because he's trying to protect the jobs of the Americans. And guess what? One man's trash is another man's asset. Canada has said, come, come, come to Canada, come to Canada, come to Canada. I'll be showing you the remaining part of the video where the Minister of Immigration was talking about how immigration is going to help uh, build the Canadian society and also inviting people to come to Canada. Did the U.S. just do this? You're the immigration minister. Uh, Donald Trump wants to have an executive order restricting. These are key work visas. It's called the H-1B, which are high skilled, a lot of uh, software engineers and others um, from coming to the United States. These are highly skilled workers. Immediately, CEOs in Canada, like the CEO of Shopify, said, hey, come to Canada if you can't get into the U.S. What do you make of Donald Trump barring people from the H-1B visa, that coveted visa, and what could it mean for our economy? Well, I'm smiling because I'm uh, loath to invoke uh, hockey analogies, but uh, Canada certainly has a sterling record when it comes to that sport. But I will say that we saw the news yesterday. We're combing over the details of it. We want to be sure that we understand any potential impacts on Canadians. But I also want to be clear uh, with your viewers that in Canada, we believe that immigration is going to spring our economic recovery out of this global pandemic. Uh, we have a plan in place that looks to leverage the best and the brightest from around the world. We've got pathways like the Express Entry Program and the Global Talent Stream, which will help bring entrepreneurs, engineers, innovators. We've also got pathways for manual laborers and skilled laborers and those who are contributing to our most urgent needs uh, in our agricultural sector in the short term, as well as living up to our, our, our long-term humanitarian commitments by helping the most vulnerable. So I'm very excited about leveraging immigration. The demographic reality is this. We have an aging population. We have more retirees than ever. And if we want to preserve our governance with respect to public uh, health care and education and retirement security, we need to go through grow through immigration. Ask any serious economist, and they will tell you the same thing. All right, but do you have what's your message? And will you maybe offer more spots for people around the world who are looking now? They can't get to the United States. I know there's travel restrictions, but the war for talent is a big deal in the, in the world of immigration. What is your message to uh, highly skilled workers around the world that are trying to go to places like Silicon Valley that, frankly, would be great to have here in Canada? Uh, if they're going to ban them, what's your message to them right now, if you have one? Come to Canada. Uh, we'll take you with a smile, uh, as we have done historically and as we will continue to do in the future. And I'm looking forward to having that discussion uh, with Canadians as we roll out the next stages of our three-year immigration plan. The pathways are there. Uh, this is a country of great promise, of great opportunity. It's a country where we respect one another and where, I, where we have historically grown through immigration. So I see a tremendous opportunity that lies before us and one that I am uh, looking forward to embarking upon with uh, Canadians. All right, uh, Minister Marco Mendicino, great to have you on the program. We will find out if there's a flood of skilled workers coming to Canada because they can't get to the United States. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. So that was the video where the immigration minister was talking about people coming to Canada. As long as the United States don't want people to come to their country, Canada is open. Canada is looking for people like people to come to canada and if you have not started the process of immigration you just have to start it now but i will tell you the truth 
Canada needs more younger people because, you know, express entry is becoming very tough. It's also very tough getting a provincial nomination for people who are above 30 years. So if you are above 30 years, you need to like, you know, put in a lot of effort in your English language test, which is the IELTS exam. You also have to put in effort in learning French. If you need to really learn French, you have to put in effort and get a good French score. And also talk to your partner. If you're married, talk to your partner to also evaluate their credentials and write the language exams, which is the IELTS as well, to boost your scores. Because immigrating favors younger people compared to matured people. So anybody who is like from 40 years and above, it becomes tougher for the person to immigrate. That reminds me, I think I need to do a video where I will share some tips for people who are like 40 years, 45 years and above, how they can also immigrate to Canada. It will be a separate video from this one. So just, you know, stay tuned to this channel. Yes, you have to stay tuned to this channel. <laughs> Don't mind me. I just love goofing around in my videos. Anyway, so um, immigration favors younger people. So if you know anybody who is young, who is 30 years old, who has a master's degree, yes, you need to have a good qualification as well at least a master's degree or two or more additional educational qualifications and um, just encourage the person to, you know, write the language test, that's language exam, the IELTS or the TEF and get into the express entry pool. There are options for provincial nominations, but of course, you know, it is also very, very competitive. And with this new announcement that has been made, by the immigration minister to welcome more people into canada of course you know it's going to be more and more competitive so you need to like put yourself at a competitive advantage on this channel i share different ways of immigrating to canada even on the canada info hub um instagram page i also share different ways of immigrating to canada for people who cannot come in through the normal way of course there is the job way and guess what this um H-1B visa that was banned by Trump is mainly for highly skilled tech workers. And I have actually done a video on the global talent stream. I will be leaving the link of that video in the description box of this video so that you can go back and watch it. I have done a video on the global talent stream. And that global talent stream actually targets tech workers where um, anybody can apply from anywhere in the world into any of the tech jobs and uh, come to Canada under work permit. The processing time is just two weeks and you'll be in Canada. If you're an information technology person and you've got the technical skills, you've got the experience, um, Canada is waiting for you. Like Canada is waiting for you. If US does not want you, then come to where you will be appreciated. I mean, why are you struggling to get into a country that is rejecting you when there is another country that is looking for you? You don't need to go to a place where you are being rejected. You just have to come to somewhere you will be appreciated. And based on that, even the CEO of Shopify, guess what? The guy is a young guy, a very young guy, 39 years old, a German Canadian, Tobias is his name. The CEO of Shopify is one of the, one of the online e-commerce platform that wants to compete against Amazon. The CEO has announced that they are looking for tech talents all over the world that people can apply. I'll be showing you the tweets where he stated that you can come to Canada, they will find a way of making you relocate to Canada. So if you're looking for a job, if you're an IT person, go to Shopify website and search for any tech jobs that are available and apply. And who knows, you might be lucky. And of course, if you need to get a job, you need to get a Canadian standard resume. Um, check the description box of this video. You will also see the website of where you can get a Canadian standard resume. That is very important. Don't just throw a random resume. Of course, if you throw a random resume, you won't get the kind of job you are looking for or you won't even get any employer calling you. So this is the biggest opportunity and the biggest news um, so far for the Canadian um, government and Canada itself because we are happy to take all the talents that the United States is rejecting. All the talents the United States don't want, Canada is going to take all of them because we have an option for people becoming permanent residents and also becoming citizens in Canada instead of wasting your talent in the United States and not knowing when you get your green card 
or becoming a citizen in, in, in the United States, just come over to Canada. I mean, you know, we love people. We love to welcome people. We are friendly people. <laughs> okay, so this is me selling and marketing Canada for people. Yes, <laughs> because I live in Canada. Anyway, um, I think I've talked too much today, have I? I hope I have not talked too much today. So please share this video. And um, I still have the list of um, the tech companies in Canada. I compiled a list of 100 companies. 100, sorry, 100 tech companies in Canada and I have given it to so many people for free. You see, I am a giver. I love to give. So what you will do for me is to just share this video. Click the like button on this video. Share this video to your friends and family and hopefully I see you one day in Canada. Thank you so much for watching and see you in my next video. Bye-bye.